Welcome to A Day of Prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning, everybody. My name is Layla, and you're listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. We're so grateful to have you here this morning, and we're blessed. But before we get into the Word, let's take a moment and pray. God, we just thank you for today, and we thank you for the divine healing that you provided for each and every one of us, Lord, whether it's in our finances, in our relationships, Lord, in our physical bodies. Lord, we just thank you for it, and we claim it now in faith, God, and we walk in it, and we rejoice before you, Lord. We thank you for the table that you prepare before us in the presence of our enemies, God, that every need that we have is met, Lord, and it's supplied abundantly because of your goodness and your mercy and your favor that you show towards us, God. We thank you for our partners and we thank you for our listeners, Lord, and those that you're continually bringing into your kingdom, our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. And we just thank you for today and we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. We are continuing our study in the book of Acts and thank you for joining us for it. We are still covering verses 16 through 34. So if it's your first time joining us, or you just need a refresh on that section of scripture, I want to encourage you to take the time and opportunity to pause the episode now and read through there in order to better aid along in following in the discussion. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. And now we are opening the floor to give each of you the opportunity to share with the Holy Spirit speaking and ministering to you and to ask any questions that you have. So... Who'd like to begin? I'll begin, I guess. All right, well, Charles. Um, one thing that the Lord was showing me and speaking to me about is that as we look at what Paul is doing here, was that when he went to go talk to him, like Mom was saying in previous podcasts, he had a different approach than what he had for previous places. <clears throat> and what I found an what I found very interesting is that when Paul first started his message in verse 22, then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. And what the Lord was speaking to me about this was that while it was also an opportunity for Paul to examine himself. It was also an opportunity for him to show the grace of God that was already on the inside of him and that was given to him. It was an opportunity to, I'd say, reciprocate what was given to him to somebody else. And how Laura um, reminded me of that was if you think of a torch and how sometimes they used to light torches with other torches. You didn't strike them all up individually you lit one then you lit the others with that one and that's something that's happening here it's similar it's not the lord coming back to okay i gave you grace now i need to come and give you some yes he is the one who gives us grace but he also says i've done this for you now go do it for someone else he wants us to go off and be his body in the world not sitting around like mushrooms and (laughs) expecting (laughs) something to occur Hmm. And then with that, also, another thing that I found interesting was that this is the exact exact same perspective that the Lord has had the whole time. And we see that what Paul was saying that the Lord has overlooked this because of your ignorance. And if we go to Jonah, the book of Jonah, we see that he gives the exact same grace and mercy to the Ninevites because they had no knowledge. Mm-hmm. He's not waiting for someone. He's not sitting on his throne preparing to strike someone down saying i can't wait till he sins and nor was he saying i know you don't understand but i'm still gonna strike you because i just feel like doing that Mm -hmm. but that he gives everybody the same opportunity or he would not be righteous if he had certain rules for certain people then it would fail to be consistency Mm -hmm. and that would make him opposite of what he says that he's no respecter of persons Yes. That would mean he is a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's not. He's truthful. There's no lie in God. There's no variation or shadow of turning. 
There's no second face there. <laughs> he's God. He's the one. He's the Lord who changes not. And he's a good God and a merciful, loving God. How he described himself as abounding in goodness and truth and for keeping mercies for generations is absolutely true. Yes. And then also with that <clears throat> was as he was giving them this grace and this mercy, it was not to be abused. It's not okay, Lord, I'm not going to listen to you so I have an excuse later to say, you can't judge me on this. So you can't put your hands in your ears and go, la, 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 la. Yes. I can't hear you. <laughs> I didn't hear you, Lord. Yes, but he gives everybody an opportunity. It may not look the exact same way, but even if he just comes to you directly, which would be itself the greatest form, if he does that, you still had an opportunity. If you decide to turn away... As you and I would say, you open yourself up to the repercussions, the consequences. Mm -hmm. I've given you an opportunity and you made your choice. Yeah, if you turn away from the Lord, uh, you know, the adversary is over there licking his chops, rubbing his hands together, waiting to get his hands on whatever aspect of your life. And it it is a high, a high price to pay. Um, you mentioned something about the Lord gives everybody a chance and it doesn't all look identical in everybody's life what that chance is but that that length and breadth is determined by god and he unlike humans who can only judge your outward appearance unless holy spirit reveals something god knows the thoughts and intents of the heart so you could tell your mom all day long i didn't hear you when you said that but the lord's like i know you heard <laughs> yes. here's the moment that you heard right when we stand before in that that judgment seat that's uh, referenced in um act seventeen thirty one. Uh, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. That's by Jesus. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. So that was the proof that everybody is going to be judged that Jesus was raised from the dead. But when you stand before him, when you're judged, he's going to show you that moment that you turned away. When did I turn away from you, Lord? When did I, when did I not care for you, Lord? And he's like, as much as you did it in this, or here it is right there. And you're paused, you know, eating that Dorito when the Holy Spirit's knocking on the door to your heart and saying, Hey, come to me. And you're like, no, maybe later I need to have my coffee first or, you know, whatever it looks like. And it reminds me of Haman in the book of Esther. Mm -hmm. Where he was pursuing and pursuing and pursuing the people of God. And he kept going past um, opportunities to make a different choice. And then finally, his wife spoke to him and said, Haman's a Jew? Now, she had been egging him on like <laughs> right. during the whole, uh, uh, at various elements when he spoke to her, she was egging him on like, yeah, do it, do it, you know, do it, do it. But at the very end, right before Haman was caught in his own trap, she said, Mordecai's a Jew. If you've fallen in his presence, right? And she references that if he's a Jew and you're already starting to fall in his presence, you should probably rethink your, your strategy there. Um, honey, will you look that up for me just so we can get the, the exact wording on that um, in the book of Esther? But she was, that was yes. the Lord speaking through the proverbial donkey. She wasn't a believer. She wasn't someone on, on behalf of of the people of God or championing them. But in a moment of the Lord just using her lips, she said something to him that should have set off buzzers in his heart. And instead he closed his ears and proceeded down the path that he wanted to go on. Well, the consequence is that he was hanged on his own gallows. And not only that, his whole household was destroyed and turned to an ash heap. Oh, you got it, Layla? That's um, Esther 613. Mm -hmm. I'll read it to me. Us. When Haman told his wife Zeresh and all his friends everything that had happened to him, his wise men and his wife Zeresh said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall as of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but will surely fall before him. And what's that next verse? Next verse, say? Read that, please. While they were still talking with him, the king's eunuchs came and hastened to bring Haman to the banquet which Esther had prepared. Mm hmm. So. The banquet, there was still time to go, hey, I, I was working this thing, uh, King, and I, I set some stuff up that wasn't right. Let me repent. He didn't need Esther to bust out and tear off, you know, her, <laughs> her queenly robes and go, ha ha, I'm a Jew. He didn't need her to do that. She had nothing to do with it. His repentance was between him and the Lord. And that opportunity that came where there suddenly these folk, the same people that were 
egging him on and going, do it, do it. You should build the gap. Don't you have, you know, you should, you should make it happen. And, you know, all of these things telling him to be contrary to God and to continue in the path that he was on. Those same people in a moment said, er, the Lord used their voice and his wife's voice in particular to go, Hey, you better turn the corner. Like that should have made him go, what? But that was his opportunity to choose. Well, that and, was his final opportunity <laughs> to choose. How did he know? It, I mean, actually, he went to another banquet, didn't he? Right. And so it, I wouldn't even say it was his final. God still gave him time because the banquets didn't all happen in the same night. So he mm-hmm. still had time and he persisted to ignore that warning and that knock on the door, that opportunity that God gave. And no, it didn't come in the form of a... a um, a Jewish preacher standing on a soapbox going, you there, and delivering a prophetic word and reading all his mail and saying, thus saith the Lord. It didn't look and what a traditional um, opportunity would look like. It didn't look like what exactly verbatim what Paul said here to the Athenians, but it was his opportunity nonetheless. It was his opportunity to change his course. So God is the one who determines what that chance looks like. But it's your job to go, is that you, Lord? You speak in Jesus and be on bated breath with him and make sure that your heart always stays open because hindsight, you know, that, that, um, colloquialism hindsight is 2020 when it comes to your life and salvation, it may be too late. Now, in the case of, um, Haman, Jesus hadn't physically come in the earth yet, but if there was an opportunity for Abraham to be welcomed into the kingdom on due time, then that meant there would have been an opportunity for Haman to be welcomed into the kingdom in due time after Christ had, was crucified and raised from the dead. Does that make sense? Because yes. Abraham was in Abraham's bosom. That's how the Lord describes it. Um, Jesus, the, the Messiah, when he was in the natural ministry, he described it as Abraham's bosom when he was talking to the rich man and Lazarus and all of those things about the chasm being in between them. And you know, you remember what I'm... Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so he didn't go to hell but he may not have been able to go fully into heaven, but he was still kept in a, a lovely place until such a time that Christ was raised from the dead. And then now the heavenly community is coming back together. So Haman had an opportunity. He could, still could have said yes to God. And then he would have been hanging out with Abraham until it was time to be fully welcomed in to heaven. Mm-hmm. So he had a chance. As we all do. So the chances that Christ give you or that he's offering to other people should not be esteemed lightly. Well, I'm waiting for him to do it this way. I'm waiting for it to look like that. I'm waiting for the the, car, the clouds to part and one, one ray of sunshine to hit my right eye, right above my eyelashes, and then the dove to fly over and then two pigeons go by. The opportunity is not yours to try to set up the parameters, but it is your opportunity to receive when the Lord presents it. So, so all that... I'm reminded of a few different things, <laughs> right? There is, uh, as you were talking about, it doesn't always look like what we think it looks like, mm-hmm. right? What did the Lord say many times or a few times? He said, I have sheep that are not of this fold, mm-hmm. right? And then he also, in John 16, talks about the Holy Spirit and the role of the Holy Spirit, right? He says, uh, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment, a sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, and of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Right? Yes. So I, I bring that because uh, depending on your translation of the scripture, that section about the role of the Holy Spirit is he will teach the world about these things because they didn't understand. They misunderstood, right? In this section in Acts and at, uh, at Athens with the Athenians, they wanted to know about this new doctrine that Paul was teaching. But then they asked the Lord the same thing, right? About what new teaching he's giving. He said, the doctrine I teach isn't mine, but his who sent me, right? And we, we covered that yes. in one of the, the earlier, more recent podcasts, right? But um, so as we were reading that, I was reminded of uh, well, all the way back in Deuteronomy 29, 29. What's it say? The secret things belong to the Lord our God, mm-hmm. but those things which are revealed belong to us 
and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. And it's interesting when that verse pops up, right? And this is why it's interesting. If we back up a little bit, right? Uh, to verse 24, he says that the nations would say, why has the Lord done this, done so to this land? Where does the head, sorry, uh, the heat of his great anger mean? And that the people would say, because they've forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt, for they went and served other gods and worshiped them. Gods they did not know, and that he had not given to them. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against his land to bring it to bring on every curse that is written in this book. And the Lord uprooted them from their land in anger, in wrath, and in great indignation, and cast them into another land as it is this day. And then of course there's that verse. Right about the secret things belong to the Lord, but those things which are revealed, right? And then it says now, in, in beginning of chapter 30 of Deuteronomy, it says, It shall come to pass when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations which the Lord your God drives you, and you return to the Lord your God and obey his voice. According to all that I command you today, you and your children, with all your heart and with all your soul, that the Lord your God will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. And again, as I was saying, it doesn't always look like what we think it looks like. All right? Yes. The earth's the Lord's and everything in it. He's mm-hmm. just ta- teaching them. I'll say he's revealing to them, the Athenians, mm-hmm. the secret things of the Lord and what the Lord meant. But that clearly has been was misunderstood for such a long time that it wasn't being observed, it wasn't being followed, practiced in their lives around the world, right? Not just with the Lord's chosen people, the the Hebrews or the Jews, right? Mm-hmm. But as you you brought out, He sent Jonah, not to the children of Israel. Well, and that was long before Christ. Amen. Yes. So there's the same pattern and example. Now here he is sending Paul to minister to others, to teach them or give them the opportunity to understand those secret things mm-hmm. that are not common. And, and I say they're not common. There's no such thing as common knowledge, right? Yes. Because if it was common, then everyone would be doing it. But clearly it's rare because there are few doing it. Paul is being literally chased and hunted down by those that claim to be of the faith, that claim to be doing the will of the Lord, which is why he's in Athens right now, right? In this, in this part of the, the scripture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then of, of the book of Acts. And or is using him to minister to those Yes, who are Jews, but also to the Gentiles to give them the opportunity to enter in. in. And by enter in, I mean into the covenant with the Lord. And to correct, it says, they will worship gods that they did not know. Well, they did not know God. And now he's here he is educating them about the true and living God. Mm-hmm. Which well, clearly was a, a secret thing. But not so secret that other nations didn't know about the Lord. Right? Yes. And you can see that yes. all the way, I'll say, back in the beginning. Uh, especially, you know, whether it's Exodus or whatever, right? There are multiple people that knew about God. Even in Pharaoh's own house. It says they knew the Lord. Mm-hmm. As is long before, well, scripture was ever written. But they knew the Lord. And the Lord moved in in their lives and on his people's behalf to protect them, to bless them, to feed them, to care for them, just as he does everyone else. 
Because mm-hmm. God is love. He's good to all. Amen. And he wills that no one would perish, that not one would perish. Mm-hmm. And but we have a choice. And he didn't even allow um, judgment to come until they had an opportunity to hear, which is also what was referenced about the appointed times and seasons. So God is so good. He's so Amen. good and so gracious. Amen. So there's a lot in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's, with that, let's pause there for today. And can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. I promise. Lord, just thank you for today. Just thank you for giving us the, giving us all the same chance, Lord, not showing favoritism, Lord. And Lord, I also thank you for giving us the right word inside of the right season, Lord, and just showing us everything that we need, Lord, and not leaving us without, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.